Right, hi everyone. This first video is to um, just introduce the general Max environment, set up some preferences, talk about the program elements, and some things to watch out for. So we should do some basic things. When you open Max, by default, the Max console window opens. This is your standard output where you'd see your error messages or anything you want to print. Uh, by default comes here. Um, it only is open if it's open the last time you close the program. So if it's not open, you can go up into window and select the Max console and it will appear. Come back. I'm gonna move this over here. Um, gonna go to the Max menu, take a look at preferences. Preferences is gonna come up with a set of basic preferences. If we go over to the patching header, we'll see um, some things we might want to check in here. Um, as you go to any of the lines of the preferences, there is an info icon that pops up and you can hover over that and get a little explanation about um, what that preference does. What we want to make sure we've got hooked up um, is the assistance bubbles so that uh, we will get help in Mac patches when we hover over inlets and outlets of objects and messages and other ideas. Um, scroll down, I like to turn on segmented patch cords to just help make cleaner patchers uh, as we work. The rest of the things, um, you get a whole list of all the preferences here mixed together. We can leave them as they are right now, we don't really need to do much else. Uh, but in patching, the assistance bubbles and the segment of patch cords. So we're going to um, go on to look at the program window. Uh, a little idea. So we can go up to File, select New Patcher. Patcher is just what Max calls a file. Um, Going to expand it here, bring it out. Um, and go along and look at uh, what's going on around the border of the workspace. So up at the top, uh, we have a zoom factor. I am frequently in class running this at more than 100%, so to make it easy to see in projection. You lose a little workspace geography ge um, space, but I'm going to help it. I'm going to turn it up for this one to 200%, so you can see a little bit better in the video. Then right here next to the right, we have program elements. These are the things we use to make our programs work inside of a patcher. Objects, messages, comments, uh, toggle, button, number boxes, sliders, and Max for Live objects. Over on the right, we have a little calendar icon. The calendar is helpful if you forget what you call a file. Uh, it, you can go into the calendar and you can see what you opened on what day. Um, um, if something exists that you opened, it'll show you the name when you click on the date. Um, if it was a help file, it'll show you. If you didn't, if you open something that was untitled and you didn't save it, it won't show up here in the calendar. Uh, but here you can see uh, I taught the advanced class, so I have more audio elements here and some help files open. But that's a nice little way to kind of find what may have happened recently. As you move along the right, um, these will help you as you are programming. The inspector will give you uh, ways of setting uh, parameters and behaviors of element program elements in the patcher. There's a reference icon. If you have an element selected, it will bring up help, uh, an abbreviated help for that icon. You can also get a Max console window attached to your window here. Then moving around to the bottom left, there's this lock icon as you're here. Um, clicking on it puts the patcher into run mode, you know, run enabled, unlocked is so you can edit and you'll see the icons dim and come back. You can also do that by clicking anywhere in this white space or empty space, holding down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows. If I command click, it locks and um, command click again, it unlocks. It just reverses its state so you can work. 
Um, so now then let's get started with doing something very simple uh, just to see how all this works. Um, go to the new object icon and um, click on it. Brings in an object. Like I say, mine are kind of big right now. Um, it's going to appear in the center. Uh, the left edge of the object is going to appear in the center, uh, ready for text input. That's the blinking cursor. So I'm going to type um, print, hit return, and now I have a print object. I'm going to move it up to the left part of my patch. Objects have the gray border top and bottom. They also have hard corners all around. Print object also has one inlet. You can see the little dip. And when I mouse over it, it lights up. And then if I hover, I'll get the assistance bubble that we made sure we turned on in the preferences. It says anything to be printed in the max window is what happens when you send stuff to this inlet. Okay. Um, it has no output because this output goes to this window. Now let's go up and add a message. It also pops up in the center. We can type anything into this message we want. Uh, I'm going to type help. Here, if I hit return, uh, I get a line break. I would keep adding. So to exit out of text entry for a message, I'm going to click outside the message box. It resizes to whatever I entered. It has two inlets and one outlet. I'm going to move it up above the print um, object. Then um, you'll notice looking around uh, when it's selected, there's the hard corners of its bounding box to edit. Um, when it's unselected, the corners are rounded. It has no um, gray border top and bottom. It's just all one color by default as you go through. Um, so um, going to connect the outlet of help to the inlet of print. And I do that by just dragging over the inlet if it is uh, lit up, highlighted, I can click to release. Again, this is assuming you have segmented patch cords on, and I can lock the patch. Now, what help does is it just stores some static message, or what the message object does that I have typed help, stores a static message that will send out whenever I click on it uh, in the locked patch. So I click on help, and then you can see over here in my Max console, uh, print, that's the object, uh, help, and put that out. I can go back and unlock, and uh, again, I'm going to unlock this time by command clicking, and say I want to change the message. can type in here, and basically you have to double click, or once to select once uh, the object and the message and wants to select the text. Uh, so I could change the, um, the help to um, hello, click outside, lock the patch with a command click. And over here, I clicked on the message. The contents show up in the print, the max console window with the print in front of them. Um, so a little bit more, just some basic things. The first Max tutorial, this part of your homework, is going to really cover this in a lot more detail. And so I'm going to stay out of the way of that. But just a few things. I'm going to unlock the patcher, command click, and um, show you how to select. It's easy to select objects. Um, by dragging over them. But patch cords, I have to hold down the Option key to select them if I drag. If there's only one patch cord, I can click on it. But if there's more than one and I want to get it, I would drag over it. If I delete an object that's attached by a patch cord, uh, the patch cord deletes as well. But so I'm going to delete this and just talk about as segmented patch cords. Say my objects were arranged, not vertically, and I wanted to um, make a pattern or route the patch cord in a certain way. If 
so I can hit delete. To do that, I click to start the patch cord, then I click, and that creates a breakpoint where I can change directions. Click again, I can have another breakpoint, and whenever the inlet is highlighted, I can click to let go. So one of the things that came up in class was with segmented patch cords, you can um, maybe choose the wrong one and you start something that you don't want to connect to anything and you can keep clicking. I forget, there's a certain number of clicks or line breaks before the patch cord disappears or hold down the command button and click anywhere in this white space and the patch cord disappears. So now just a final thing. If we did this, we're going to go up to the file menu and save save command in the file menu is is further down than you might expect in a program the save and the save as pick save is untitled it's essentially doing the save as create a folder for your classwork or for your max work i've put it in here in the semester's class and i have a folder called demo patchers and i am going to title this um uh, something else called environment intro. Um, I tend to not put spaces in my file names. It's not a problem if you do. Uh, I also tend to use the capital letters to start words, uh, just as a manner of working. Also, rather than just saying um, patcher one, patcher two, I'm trying to put something in the name that helps you when you look at the folder, see what the patcher does make it easier for you to open again later to see what you're doing. Um, max adds the max pat extension after the dot. So that's part of max and that's what makes this work cross platform between Mac and windows. I'm going to save it. I'll see the name is up here that I saved it with. And that's all of the intro for now. Like I say, messages, print these objects and patch cords. You're going to get more detail. That's part of the first assignment. Thanks. Bye.